I'm going to draw a number line. We're going to need a lot of paper for this, which is why we're running this one uh, on the continuous stream of brown paper, because I'm going to do a number line starting from zero. We'll put one maybe here, and I'm going to continue this number line, and I'm going to label all the primes. We'll do them in green as we go along, if that's okay. So every, every single prime I'm going to mark on this, uh, we may, I feel like that might not be enough paper. Maybe I've got the scale. I, okay, fine. It's quite, it may be the longest number file video ever. And uh, there, uh, they all are there. That is the point zero point four one four. Hang on, let me get the rest of these digits. Six eight two five zero nine, and maybe more digits eight five one one, and it keeps going. There you go. Hmm. All the primes. So it's like, you know, pi is the circle constant, e is the exponential constant. This. It's the prime constant, and it's a number that represents all the primes. Every single prime. I'm willing to hear more. Oh, there, oh <laughs> more, more. Oh, okay, we'll do more. So, uh, astute viewers, you can try and predict where we're going with this. So I have declared accurately that this is all the primes. I'm now going to do something seemingly unrelated, and then we uh, will work out how we combine the two. So. The unrelated thing I'm going to do is writing fractions in base 2. Okay, we'll do that. A half. Now in base 10, we write a half as 0 0.5. But then in base 2, we write that as 0 0.1. And you think, well, hang on, how, you know, how, how do we extend the idea of base 10? Because normally when we do binary, it's almost always whole numbers. At least in popular mathematics. But in reality, if you're doing things with numbers, they're very rarely neat and tidy. Like an integer, you've got to have um, your decimal places. We can have a think about how we represent them in base 10, how we do it in base 2, and the differences between them. And a half is nice and neat in both cases. Now, some numbers are not necessarily nice and neat. So if we wanted to do um, a third in base 10, that can't be done. It's really annoying. So you end up with... 0 0.333 3, 3, and then you never stop doing threes. It's threes forever. So that three you could do it's like repeating or something like that. I don't know. Whatever symbol you like to use for that. And in base, I'm gonna actually gonna look it up real quick. Oh, it's also a mess. Here is it. 0.0101. 0 and then that repeats. It's like zero, zero, one, one over and over again. Right. And that just carries on going, 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 going. We often don't think it really through in uh, base 10 because it seems so obvious. But what you're doing is you're taking however many decimal places you've got and then dividing it by 10 to the power of how many there are. So in this case, and I've not picked particularly great examples, in this case here, what you're actually looking at, that's going to be 5 divided by 10, and that gives you a half. And in this case over here, that's 1 divided by 2, that's a half. Quite nice. Here, we kind of, if we draw a line here, that would be 3 over 10, or 33 over 100, or 333 over 1,000, or 3333 over 10,000, and so on and so on and so on. So if we actually ended up with 333 over 1,000, you can see that's close to a third, but not quite. And the more we have, the closer we get, but we'll never quite get there. This is the same idea here. So what we could do is do 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So we're going to stop here. Then we divide that by, oh, you know what? I'm going to switch this to base 10. So that in the binary of that, that's 19. And then we divide it by 2 to the power of, um, how many places have we done? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 to the power of 6 which is 64. And that is close to a third. No, it's, it's not as close as this, because this is a bigger base, so it converges faster. But this is reasonably close. Hmm. And the more we did of these, the more we would get. You can try and assemble a number that's, you know, a fraction in base 2 to see how it would look as a fraction. So in a recent video, 
And I didn't mention this in the video, I looked at a bug in Minecraft where there was a weird behavior when boats were falling from very specific heights and, and the code wasn't doing what it was meant to do. And that was because in the code it had to represent uh, 0.4. And so 0.4 in base 10 is nice and neat. But 0.4 is not nice and neat. It's you know, 0 0.0110011 and then that repeats 0, 0, 0, 0011 and so on, so on, so on. It's a mess. And this is because five, five is a factor of 10. And so you get a nice neat one, whereas five is not a factor of two uh, or any power of two. And so terrible. So actually, we complain a lot about base 10 being bad for writing fractions because it's only factors of two and five. And they're the only fractions where you get nice neat um, multiples of those. You get nice neat decimal expansions. Base two is even worse. And so because 0.4 never terminates in base two, and when you put that into binary code, you have to cut it off somewhere. You, have, you only end up with an approximation of 0.4. So even though we can have an exact 0.4 in base 10, in base 2 you only get an approximation. And so that was, that was what was causing the bug in Minecraft, which I found very, very um, uh, interesting. And we'll link to that video below if you want to check it out. Our point is, you can flip between base 10 and base 2 with these, these decimal numbers. And now you think, well, hey, where's our prime constant coming from? Well, I'm going to put the prime constant into base 2 and we'll see what it looks like. So I will label it, actually I'll put it underneath. So the prime constant can be written as 0 0.0110101000001 and so on. And if you think, well, what's going on here? Well, the first position is a zero. Positions two and three are a one. Four isn't. Five is. Six isn't. 7 is, 8, 9, and 10 are not, 11 is, 12 isn't, 13 is, and I'm both describing if it is a 1, and I'm describing if it's prime. So what mathematicians did was make a binary number, so there's just a 1 wherever there's a prime and a 0 wherever there's not, and that's completely determined. That like There are infinitely many primes, but they're in a nice, neat order, and we know, well, we've found them to a point, and we can fill them in, so that defines a very specific real number. And it defines it in base two. The base is arbitrary. I put it in base 10 because that's easy to understand. I am going to assume that this number was manufactured with the knowledge of the prime numbers and it wasn't found Correct. and gave us the prime. A hundred percent. It is completely useless at predicting prime numbers because we only know its value by finding the prime numbers and then putting them in there. You might think it's just a novelty. It's just like, oh, well done. Of course we can do that. Just another way of in It's just another way of encoding the primes, but you gotta find them first to encode it. What I think is kind of fun is you can do this for any sequence of integers where they all always increase, which in mathematics we call a monotonic sequence. It just means that the next one always gets bigger, which means if like they've already been sorted in numerical order. And if you go into the online encyclopedia of integer sequences, you can see there's loads of sequences on there. Not all of them are monotonic, but they happen to be monotonic. They always increase, and the primes do, because they always go up. So th there is a number, there's a Fibonacci constant between zero and one, which will encode every single Fibonacci number. I say we'll encode every single Fibonacci number. We don't know what it is. We have to find the Fibonacci numbers first and then reverse it. But for me, that doesn't ruin the beauty of, I mean, there are infinitely many and uncountably infinitely many real numbers between zero and one. Like there's so, there's so much going on in this tiny little range. And I think it's incredible. I think we often forget the power of having infinitely many digits after the decimal point. Like it's a long way down, it never ends. And that's why there are just so many numbers packed in there. And it's, just, it's the same as like every possible conceivable monotonic series of numbers is it is in there that is Somewhere. cool yeah. that is cool i think it's amazing and so any sequence of numbers you can think of that always increases you can turn it into a real number somewhere between zero and one and the most famous of all of those is the prime constant because the primes are just the the, the mascots of mathematics and so of course it's, it's very funny to say we can encode the infinitely many prime numbers which are famously difficult to find into a single a single number and i think that's i think it's very interesting I feel like because this encodes the primes, the, the, the fundamental numbers, 
And it's in bass too, which seems to be the nerd's favourite bass. Yeah. This strikes me as a really good candidate for the number that would be sent to us by an alien civilization. Absolutely. Like, if you beamed out 0, 1, 1, like on and off in this sequence, there's no plausible natural uh, event that would generate the primes like this. Now, people might complain because you're like, you can make a game of life simulation that generates the primes, but that's not gonna happen randomly in the universe. But this, like, if you came across this sequence been beamed out, you'd be like, oh my goodness, it's like beaming out the digits of pi. But then, again, you could put pi into base two and beam that, but what if somewhere else in the universe, the curvature of space time is different and they got a different pi? That'd be pretty terrifying. Whereas primes are always primes. And so this, this is it, if you wanna, if you want to, if you want to yell, hey, we're pretty clever. That's your number. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed that and you want more Matt Parker in your life, and let's be honest, who wouldn't? Why don't you check out his latest book, Love Triangle. You can also check out his own YouTube channel, Stand Up Maths, and a playlist of all his previous appearances on Numberphile. I'm going to link to all of that down below in the description, the comments, the usual things. Love Triangle. Give it a go. It's pretty good. <laughs>